Hey friends, it is Wednesday, and that means it's Ask a Flower Farmer. And my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler with the Gardener's Workshop, and thank you so much for showing up here today. And we're gonna have some um, conversation about, if you have questions on, let's see, growing cut flowers, whether you're a home gardener or a flower farmer, um, starting seeds, farm dogs, managing your farm, whatever you got, bring it on, friends. And um, so before we get started, well, first, and remember, if you do have a question, that little bubble down at the bottom of your screen that has a question mark in it, that is the best place to post your questions if you want me to see them. Um, that way I don't have to scroll through everybody's name and perhaps miss your question. So, Post your questions down there about anything flower farming or flower growing related, and um, I'll do my best to answer that for you. And if you're seeing folks post the sunflower emoji, that means that they are one of our online course students. And friends, we have so many. I mean, I was just working on our online course list this morning, and our library of courses is just growing, and we have um, several on-demand courses now. Uh, we have a brand new one just out from Ellen Frost on preparing to sell to florist, which is so we are having such amazing feedback as well as our Collectives 101. That means... <clears throat> If you were like me, you didn't know what a collective is. A collective, a lot of people call them co-ops where a lot of growers get together um, to organize, to sell to commercial customers so that they can like stay home and farm. And there's a person in charge of all of the sales part. Um, that's what a collective is. And Amelia Ilo is the instructor of that course. And she is the top dog in that arena. And she, the class is amazing. Um, both of those courses are, are 50 bucks each, y'all. Um, and you can buy them anytime. And I just highly recommend for anybody that wants to sell commercially, both of those courses are amazing. Um, and remember, once you buy it, you have it forever. And um, so give that a whirl, as well as, you know, this is a great time of the year. Another great on-demand course is Jenny Loves Making Workshops Work For You. Friends, she teaches you how to do workshops on your farm and a destination, all the bases you need to cover. Um, and that is, as she tells you in the course, her most lucrative piece of her business is doing workshops. That's another great one. And then, of course, this is um, no-till month for us. And so the no-till micro-scale flower farm, which is another on-demand course um, with Jonathan and Megan Lease, is on special. We always run a special for them in July. Anyway. So check it out, y'all. Um, we can never stop learning, and we're just, I'm really pleased with the way our library is just getting fatter and fatter, and um, we just love that we have all these amazing instructors. Um, so before I jump in at what I was getting ready to say to you, is at 1 o'clock today over on Clubhouse, it's going to be a little different today because my sidekick is out of the office, um, Jesse. So I will not be taking questions over there. Um, just because I can't manage talking and taking questions technology-wise. Um, but today I'm talking about how you can go on vacation um, or how to help manage your garden or even your farm when you go away. So it's kind of like my checklist and things, the you know, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly as usual. So meet me over on Clubhouse at 1 o'clock. If you don't have Clubhouse, it's just a phone app. You can download, join, then look for my club, Flower Farming. It's a great conversation over there, and although today it's kind of one-sided, but that's not normally the case, right? All right, friends, and then... What I wanted to highlight today before we get started is everybody like ramping up for cool flowers, I hope. Have you gotten all your peas in a row? You should be getting your seeds. Cool flowers are cool season hardy annuals. Many of us can fall plant a lot of them. And those of us that can't fall plant because we live too far north, um, although I will tell you that there are people in zones three, four, and five that are dabbling in it, um, but if you live in zone five, six, seven, eight, or nine, it is a major planting season for you. Um, and so, 
Friday inside the Gardener's Workshop phone app. That's right, friends. We have a phone app. Inside the app, I do a show on Fridays at 12 noon Eastern time. Two big pieces of news. Wait a minute. I'm picking up something. Um, is first off, I will be highlighting this week in the shopping show on Friday, Soul Blocking Friends. And what that means is if you haven't attended one of our shopping shows, we have specials and offers over there you will find nowhere else. They're only good for the live event and then until the next following morning, they go off special. Um, and this week I am highlighting Soul Blocking, which means you do not want to miss it. Um, if you have never used Soul Blocking, you can go to our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, go to resources. There is an actual category, all things soul blocking. There are tons of videos, all kinds of great information. This is the way that we start seeds. It's the way the English have done it for decades. Um, and I have a little something special for you on Friday. And I have a giveaway on Friday. Remember those harvesters? Let me grab it. This was a product that we've sold for years and years, and we ran into All right, friends, can you hear me? Somebody please give me a thumbs up. My phone just rang, unfortunately. Um, so we used to sell these, but then we had a supply problem. We love them. I use them on our farm. Thank you for that thumbs up. Um, we, especially for sweet peas, and I mean, we use the heck out of these. Anyway, this is, I'm doing a giveaway on Friday. It's only during the live show, y'all. That's the only way we can figure out how to do it. So we'll tell you how to enter once you're in, inside the app and at the show. You just have to comment with the, with the word harvester, but it's only going to be running from 12 Eastern time on Friday to a few minutes before one o'clock. And then we're going to pick somebody from those comments and we're shipping you. This was like a $55 item. Anyway, we just hope you guys will jump over, get the phone app, search your app store, um, your app store, Gardener's Workshop Live Shop. So go to whatever your phone app store is and grab it up and meet me Friday over there. You will not be sorry. Um, it's a ton of fun. And it's from the farm, me and Suzanne, and we'll have a lot of great fun. All right, wait a minute, friends. I'm coming back. And those are all my announcements. And now I see that we have um, questions. And the other thing, that if you haven't joined me on Fridays, what I'm highlighting over there is our harvest each week. And each week, I really go into depth a little bit on the new pro on the new flowers that are coming along. And this week, grasses have joined the bunch, and coxcombs are really um, starting to come in. And that's what I'll be highlighting on Friday, plus some other stuff. And then we do a lightning round on all the previous crops that I've already talked about before. So, y'all, this thing on Friday has turned into a really big deal. <laughs> I mean, we had no idea. People really just wanted help knowing what to purchase. And um, anyway, you can buy right on the show, and it's pretty dead gum awesome. All right, friends. So let's get down to some questions here. Not a question, but a comment. You're awesome. I am so grateful I found you and your team. Aw, you just made my day. Thank you so much. That is really sweet. You know, y'all... I will say this, not that I want more people to make comments about me, but how you can do that for other people in your world. I mean, it just helps people, people that you think are just winging it and doing it and doing it well, and you have so much admiration for them, you know, telling them and it, that you appreciate them is huge. That goes for moms and dads and brothers and sisters and kids too, but um, it's just, it really helps. So I appreciate that. All right, can I fall plant Lysianthus zone 7B8A? So, good question. So, Lysianthus is a cool season hardy annual, a.k.a. a cool flower. And, in fact, Lysianthus is winter hardy in your zone, and actually up to zone 6. 
I'm feeling pretty certain about. Um, however, I will tell you that we did an experiment this year where we fall planted. I'm in zone 8A. I, well, we're the same zone, 7B, 8A. So I fall planted on time, and then we planted again in very early spring, which for me, very early spring is six to eight weeks before your last frost date, which for me is mid-February. Our last spring frost is about mid um April. We planted the same varieties both times, and guess what? No difference. We got the blue that we were hoping that maybe they would bloom earlier or have more abundance or more stem length, which is the classic cool flower concept, correct? Benefits. We really did not see a big benefit. And the problem with fall planting Lizzie Anthus is Lizzie Anthus, as many hardy annuals, um, have are very sensitive to wet feet. I mean, they will get root rot in the dry, all kinds of diseases from wet soil and having wet feet at the drop of a pen. And we lost some of our Lizzie's over winter because of that. And when I saw that my very early springs did just as well, I thought, we're not even going to do that. So there, there it is in a nutshell. Hope that helps you. All right. Oh, here's another question about it. I'm trying to decide if I should plant Lysianthus in the fall, spring, or both. Uh, it will be the first time for buying plugs. Thank you so much for all your help. Okay, so that's another great question. So she's asking that very same question. And here is the other problem with fall planting and very early spring planting, unless you're a really big grower. Um, and people deeper south than me, like people in 9 and 8, 8B and 9A and 9B, they, in fact, may find that fall planting outperforms very early spring planting. But that just wasn't the case for me for this year. That can change, right? We had a cool um, fall, I mean, a cool spring and summer, and I'm sure that aided that. So you can't, like count on this 100%, but that was my experience. But here's the other problem. Because many of us are buying plugs, and there's a minimum order size for buying plugs, which is usually three trays to a box, unless you're a fairly decent size grower, that means if you're going to order them in the fall, you got to get three trays of them or something. I mean, you could get other stuff, and then you have to get another order in very early spring. Um, <clears throat> very early spring has proven to me just to kind of be my go-to for, that's going to be our go-to on the farm from now on. Um, so anyway, but yeah, that would be my thought. Hunt country flowers. Do you plant carnations in fall, star flower, scabby? I'm in zone seven. And y'all are learning so well. Everybody is now adding their frost dates in addition to their zone. Um, so, yes, I do plant scabby and carnations in the fall. Um, if One of the ways that you guys can really figure this out when you don't have me here to ask, if you go to our website and go to our seeds and go to the Cool Season Hardy Annual category of seeds, our seed descriptions include what we know to be those seeds winter hardiness zone. So, if you are in winter hardiness zone 7 and it says it is hardy to zone 6, then that means in zone 6, 7, and 8, and 9, that plant will winter over for you. So if a plant is winter hardy in your zone, then you need to be fall planting it for sure for those benefits. Morning. Could you go over how to correctly harvest yarrow? Do you cut the stem to the ground? Does this encourage new growth? So that's a really great question. And yarrow is, yarrow, one particular variety of yarrow is one of my favorites. It's called Colorado Sunset. You'll find it on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. I love that particular variety because it has, it's called Colorado Sunset, right? It has got all the colors of the sunset in it. Shrimp, very soft, powdery yellow, as well as lots of other colors. Yes, 
It is, we treat it as a cool season hardy annual, meaning I restart it every fall and plant it. Because yes, it will reseed in your garden. Yes, it will take over your garden if you let it. But the problem with doing that is the colors that I most want in that mix are not strong reseeders. White and pale pink is all you will have within two years. Um, and they're nice to have, but it's the other colors that I really want. So I have just learned that ext extinguishing the bed after I'm done, I mean, we just finished cutting it. Um, we extinguish the bed and plant something else after it, you know, and then restart them in the fall. Y'all think that may sound like extra work, but I'll tell you what's extra work. Extra work is keeping that reseeded area weeded, netted, and taken care of, and then, unfortunately, you don't even get the colors you want. So there, as you become a bigger grower, reseeding options become less attractive to you. It's just easier to restart, know what you're getting, be able to plant it where you want it, care for it where you want it, hoe it if that's what you're doing. Um, so it just is, but yes, yeah, so with yarrow, yes, I cut it all the way to the ground, the stem all the way at the ground, and it does reshoot, particularly if you give it some water. Um, definitely net it. Those stems are not um, super strong, but no stem is strong enough when their heads start to get fully developed and they'll go down in a rainstorm or even just regular wind, right? Hi, Lisa. Does fever view cut and come back? I love it. So, um, in my experience, grace or gray cut flowers, um, we don't have a lot of regrowth. Um, and frankly, this is kind of, I get this question a lot about some crops. It may regrow for some people, but I don't give it time to regrow. We cut it and it is not visible within our week or two that there's more stems obviously coming along. We're done with you. We don't have the real estate. I'm a small market grower or have been for the past 24 years. And real estate is really, really valuable to us. And so I typically, because I succession plant, meaning I'm starting seeds all the time. Have y'all started your um, fall blooming kale seeds, by the way? We're right at the end of the time to do that. If you haven't started your cut flower kale seeds, you better like get off here and go do it right now. Um, and then of course, those sweet Williams of the vernalization that need vernalization, which means a cold period, we're starting them now to get them in the ground in time to get all that special treatment. Anyway, my point is we are always starting seeds. So I always have somebody ready to go into a spot and fever few has never proven to us to be a strong re bloomer. Um, so we succession plant it by fall planting it up to zone five. So zones five, six, seven, and eight, and nine can fall plant, and then very early spring plant, then four weeks later. Um, and that is how we get it to come back again and again. And that way we get lots of good quality stems, and we know we've got them. <laughs> Here's a good one. All right, best training tip for introducing a 10-week-old rescue labradoodle puppy to flower farm in life. Oh, I love talking about dogs. Did y'all know I worked for a veterinarian for like 17 years in my previous life before I was a flower farmer? And the reason I was working at a veterinarian is because I was involved in the sport of dogs. So the number one tip that I will give you, the wee cottage farm, is to not expect your puppy to learn how to not walk in your garden. Um, I never allowed my dogs before they were trained, and training can take two to three years for this to really be different. Um, I never expected them to know not to walk in my garden and run through it. They were either um, under my control, if I had voice control of them, which doesn't happen for your dog, just like it didn't happen for my dog until they're two or three years old. Um, they always were on a long line, meaning that they had a little bit of freedom, but I was a hold of the end, and I could reel them in if I had to, to keep them out of my garden. But most importantly, the way that I really lived well with my dogs and a farm and a garden is I have a dog area, and I just used it this morning, y'all. Um, it's about, 
it's less than a quarter acre. I mean, it's a big slice of the front of our farm um, that is called our dog yard. And that means that's where I put Tucker when I am working in the garden because I am down the ground and you're planting. There's no way they're not going to come running to you and stomp everything in their path, right? Um, so secure your dog when you're working in the garden. And I did laps with my dog as I walked every morning with Tucker, the perimeter of my garden and just always corrected him if he tried to go into the garden, just eh, kept on walking and praised him when we kind of stayed around. And to this day, Tucker literally usually runs around my garden instead of through it when he's free running now because he's more mature. And that was more than one tip, but um, people expect way too much. They think dogs understand English and they can see plants. Once your garden is grown and you're, they're netted, so you have defined beds with, you know, and there's a pathway, it's easier for a dog to learn then that they're not supposed to walk through the flower park because it's taller, right? Um, so good luck with that. Um, I don't do puppies. Give me a two or three or four or five-year-old dog any day of the week and within 30 days you can have them like functioning. All right, can you please review air temp, soil temp for planting cool season annuals in the fall? Good question. All right, let me switch gears here for a minute. So for direct seeded stuff in the fall, you are it's all about nighttime temperatures. I don't do anything with soil temperatures, y'all. We tend to make things way too complicated, and that is one of them. Um, there's just a lot of variables. So for me, I 100% plant by nighttime temperatures. And so <clears throat> when you're making the transitioning transition from late summer into fall, to get your direct seeded cool season hardy annuals to germinate, you're looking for nighttime temperatures to be holding at 60 to 65 degrees at night for the next two weeks. That means you look at your phone app, and if the next two weeks are going down into the mid to low 60s, it's time or beyond that. But if they're still, if it's still staying in the 70s um, or the high 60s into the 70s, the soil is just too warm and your seeds will just sit there and not germinate and the weeds will grow and you'll think there was something wrong with your seeds. Um, so that is the key for that. For planting your transplants outdoors, it's about 65. You know, you don't have to depend on your seeds to germinate outside, but you want the temperatures to be cool enough that especially if you're using Bio360, the biodegradable film like we do with the black side up so that it benefits your plants all winter by keeping the soil a little warmer, um, we're looking for about 65 degrees. Usually when temperatures are holding at night at these temps that I'm talking about, the daytimes aren't as hot. You know, here in Virginia, we are famous still going into high 80s um, into October, um, which is kind of like when I, I should be planting mid-September to early October. I will tell you that I plant later now than I've ever planted based on the crazy weather swings that we've had. If you end up waiting too late to plant, let's just say you, you forgot to start something, you can start a seed indoors and take a cool season hardy annual outside later in the season, as long as the ground's not frozen, and plant it and hoop and cover it and give it protection. But when it's getting hotter and blazes outside, there's nothing you can do to rescue those cool season hardy annuals. So what I'm saying is I prefer to plant later than earlier. So hope that helps. So far, my flower growing has consisted of zinnias and tulips. Not a bad start. What might I plant for blooms in the time between the two? So, Katie Bell, um, cool flowers is for sure where you should probably 
Cool Season Hardy annuals is what those are. And we typically, depending on where you are, there may be some that you can plant this fall. And they do, they're the earliest bloomers in spring. They're this, a great companion to tulips, but they continue to bloom after tulips. So if you get my book, Cool Flowers, um, you can get it from us. I'd love to sign one for you. Or you can find it at bookstores everywhere or book suppliers. Um, so it's called Cool Flowers, and it will change your flower growth in life because it blooms when a lot of other stuff isn't all right hidden pond flower farm how long can i keep flowers in water with cvb and tablets before moving them into the water with the holding bag tea bag well that's a really great question um so the cvb and tablets for anyone that's not familiar with those those are the chlorine tablets that we put in all of our harvest buckets that kill the bacteria um, that quickly develops when the stems hit the, uh, I was going to say the soil, hit the water surface and expel debris, bacteria instantly starts growing. You don't really see all this. Um, although I will say if you're doing zinnias, you know how the water gets cloudy really fast? That's all bacteria. Um, that's what this pill helps to delay. So to benefit the stems, those pill, the water the stems are in with that pill needs to be for at least four hours. So that means they need to sit in it for at least four hours to get the full benefit, but you can leave them in that for up to 72 hours, which is three days. So that means you have three days to get them out of the CVB and tablet into something else, whatever it is that you're moving them to, tea bags or flower food in a vase, whatever your pleasure is there. Can you tell me more about why to plant Sweet William now, Zone 8? All right, so good question, Laura. And we don't talk about this very much because it's confusing. But let me confuse you. So there are many different varieties of Dianthus, which is Sweet William. I mean, a lot of different ones. The one that you hear me speak of most of the time is the best and the easiest. I call it the best because it's the quickest from seed to bloom, and that is the Amazon series. Amazon, you can plant in early spring, and it'll bloom 16 weeks later. There are other varieties of which we have. Um, it's called Electron. We have. You'll find it on our website. Electron is one of my favorite Sweet Williams. It's got a mix of bicolors. It is a florist um, special. They love it. But Electron is like a biennial. It needs a longer treatment. You can't just plant it in the fall when we plant all cool flowers. They don't, they aren't in the ground long enough <clears throat> to get what's called vernalization. So Electron is the one that I just um, talked to Dave Dowling about this the other day to make sure that I had my information correct. Dave said that Electron needs to be started by mid-July, early August to get it out in the ground earlier, like in September. And it's not going to be happy when you plant it out in the heat at first, but it grows into its season. Um, and I will tell you, it is, so you have to go to our website and look for it. It's called Electron, E-L-E-C-T-R-O-N. Um, it's beautiful. Um, and it's an old standby. Um, and so we love growing that, and then we grow the other type too. Um, so basically, Electron is a biennial, and Amazon is a true hardy annual that doesn't need a special treatment. So I hope that answers your question. So Lavender is asking, can soul blocks be made in advance? That is such a good question. We did a, a, a test on this years ago because we were actually thinking of making them on the trays and vacuum sealing them and selling them that way because people would ask us that. But I will tell you that once the blocks dry out, they are very difficult to rehydrate. I mean, if Bobo is sowing seeds today, let's just say, she would make several trays, sit down and sow the seeds, then make more blocks and sow more seeds. So you should make you should plant the seeds in the blocks on the same day that you make them. Yes, it is possible, but it is not easy, and it's just easier to make them as you go. Um, what people tend to struggle with is, um, especially if you're mixing your own soil at home, if, you know, we have the blocking mix recipe always on our website. 
We have the ready-made you can purchase. Um, <clears throat> and we have the nutrients if you're making your own at home and you can't find your nutrients locally. So if you're making your own blocking mix at home, you need to mix a big bunch and put it into a big plastic tub with a top, storing it dry. You can do that indefinitely. Get the, I mean, most farmers, like I did, would mix enough for a season, which was a lot. Um, and that way you don't have to stop and mix it each time. You just add water when it comes time to make your blocks. So hopefully that helps. And friends, it is 12 o'clock. And so that ends our time together. And remember, at 1 o'clock over on Clubhouse, I'll be talking about tips of leaving your garden um, for vacation. Because, I mean, I realize people want to go away in the summer. It's hard. But there are just some steps you can take to help make your return from vacation not quite so horrible. And for you to be worrying about it all the time. Um, so meet me over on Clubhouse at 1. And friends, don't forget about Friday. You've got to get our phone app. Search your phone app store for Gardener's Workshop Live App. I'm sorry, Live Shop. And join us at 12 noon Eastern Time. And this Friday, I am giving away this no longer available from us product, our harvester. Um, we tell you what you're going to have to do. And it's only, you can only enter during the one um, from 12 noon eastern time on friday till about 12 45 or 12 50 probably um, because we have to have time to pick somebody and tell you who you are <laughs> and um anyway so join me on fridays the shopping show has proven to be one of the funnest times i love sharing the harvest from the farm and giving you extra tidbits of growing and um so we have a new setup again this week this is only our eighth week i think and um, it's just getting better and better. So join me over on the shopping show. And I'm talking about soil blockers. And I have a special bundle. Special offers are always the thing about the shopping show, friends. And you will not find them on our website, any other place. So see you Friday at 12 noon Eastern time inside the Gardener's Workshop phone app. Ciao, folks.